Hello, welcome back again. You can tell we're definitely getting towards Christmas now because it's far too cold to be taking a hoodie off quite yet because we haven't started training yet we're recording this before we do. But I'm back in our Tuesday venue, as you can see. Um, sound quality will hopefully be a little better than our last one. Um, and really, this is going to be our last look at, uh, at this Savat material. Um, partly because we've reached the end of the year, partly because I've reached kind of the end of what I wanted to go through, which was very much the basic techniques. So what I want to look at this week is very much the footwork, because we've looked at a lot of the techniques, both for the hands and the feet, but a lot of them, the temptation is that it becomes a very linear thing, um, much like a lot of fencing, a lot of martial arts does, where I'll square off against my opponent, I might come with a massette, they'll quite happily parry that, come back with something else, you know, we can block, we can strike. This can go backwards and forwards in however way we want, but neither of us have really moved. Um, and that's very much not what Savat is about. Savat is very much mobile. We want to be constantly moving. So one of the important concepts to grasp is um, the decollage. Now, I have to admit, I'm a little confused in my reading whether decollage is a footwork movement or a timing. I think it is potentially both, but the idea of it is that I want to step offline, um, and that's really the movement of a decollage. So by that, what I mean is, if I'm in a off stance forward, because I'm right-handed, so left hand, left hand forward, um, if I want to decollage off to my opponent's side, I'm going to pass and pass, and I've moved up to my back to you guys, but 45 degrees to my opponent. Likewise, if I want to go the other way, I'm going to lunge, and then pivot, so I've gone 45 degrees in the other direction. And by going one way or the other, I can move out of the way. So I can use this as, uh, as some form of evasion, so if the punch was coming in, I could quite happily move out of the way of my opponent, um, but I can also use it to attack. And this is where the timing comes in. There's um, a bombardment is the kind of slow and bad timing. And by that, what I would do is, as the punch comes out, so in fact, I tell you what, I'm going to move you to your back there, so that actually when I step offline, I can still pull to the gap. <laughs> Sorry, we haven't thought this through well enough before we started. So if a punch is coming in, I can decollage out to the side, pivot round, I've done two movements of the feet, and then the bombardment timing would be that I would then come in with my musette or such into my opponent. So I've moved out the way and then hit them. So punch comes in, that kind of movement there, it, it is the bad timing, as it were. What we want is to get um, uh, the decollage. So what happens here is the punch comes in my step, but before I move the other foot, that's when I get my strike in, and then I move. So the strike comes halfway through the movement rather than after it, allowing me to do these kind of double strikes and things, and just basically attack ooh, with whichever tactic I want as I'm going. Now I can do, so far I've been doing this all with hand movement, so as a punch comes out, I'm going to step and then look at what areas I've got that I'm able to strike. It becomes much more like a slightly extended slip. If I was boxing, this kind of action here or here might allow me to slip and punch at the same time. But I want to move my foot as well, specifically so I'm gaining access round the body to deliver a better, better attack. But this works really well with my feet as well. So if I step, from here I've got quite a lot of options on what I can do with that foot. I can bring it in and we can look at our lateral that I was looking at last week. Going back a couple more weeks, I can come through and turn that into a fuetti on a low line to kick through here. Or I can do that as a high line, which allows me to deliver a kick down the center line by doing two diagonal kicks. Or by just stepping off that weight and then doing a sweeping kick I actually attack down the centre line. Um, I can do it with my coup de pied bar from here. Yeah, I can step up and turn my coup de pied bar into my opponent's leg. Um, so any of these kicks, I have that opportunity to move offline. Even the front kick, if I gather my weight in here and then launch, I'm not going to have the room to deliver my front kick, but I do have room to deliver the chamber as a knee. And um, quite often we look at uh, uh, other different martial arts, call it different things. Um, but this idea of stepping off and moving is very important because I don't want to be stationary. So now the fight starts to look a little bit differently. So if a punch comes in, I might step off and block, come in for a kick, reposition, 
and then I would be looking to come in and my opponent is going to parry, but also looking to decollage as well. So if that fist comes round, you're probably going to decollage round here. And you can see that this is now starting to become a situation, yeah, with a lot more movement involved in it than it was originally. So this idea of constantly moving, always, every time you strike, you want to be moving your feet. Every time you move your feet, you want to be striking. And always coming off so you can either attack at an angle or using that angle to defend against. So hopefully that kind of ties together how you use a lot of these techniques. Um, and hopefully that all makes sense. It does in my head. I'm hoping some of that's coming through the camera to you there. Um, so that kind of takes us to the end of the Savat stuff we're going to be looking at. You get your decollages, you've got your hand techniques, you've got your feet techniques, you've got all your basic building blocks. Um, and then obviously we mix that in with jiu-jitsu um, and cane fighting and pugilism, particularly we, we tend to do a lot of monastery boxing. Um, and we kind of meld all of these together to give us the kind of the core Bartitsu syllabus that we study here. Anyway, that's enough waffling from me for today and in fact for this year. So I will see you again after Christmas. Have a great festive season and uh, I'll catch you next time.